Are we going? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a feedlot is a facility that holds cattle, that feeds and cares for cattle to raise them to the whatever the producer desires, whether it's to grow them, to get them ready to breed and to go back out on pasture, whether it's to fatten them, to get them ready for slaughter. There's, there's a lot of different things that, that a feedlot does, um, but it's, it's basically a facility where we can help the cattle grow to, to achieve their ultimate goal. The goal for the animals in a feed yard is to get them to eat, to get them to convert that feed into meat. If they're not happy and they're not healthy, they're not gonna eat. The, the science is there so that we know that we can take care of every specific need that those animals have nutritionally, as opposed to putting them out on pasture and hoping that they're getting what, what they need. You know, we can supplement them out there with mineral supplements and things like that, but we can't guarantee that they're getting everything they need. In here, we can guarantee that. Our yard, we can run about 10,000 head of calves. And in the fall, we, we take in calves mainly directly from their mothers. We have several feeders or several producers that we will feed for. We'll take their calves in and grow them Typically for grass, most of the calves will start as, as a calf coming straight off its mom, and then we'll grow them to seven, eight hundred pounds, depending on depending on what the producer wants, what their what their final goal is with them. And a lot of them will go back out to grass. Some of them will grow a little bigger, eight, nine hundred pounds, and then they will go to a finish yard where they will um, they'll grow for anywhere from 120 to 190 days before they're ready for slaughter. Once the cattle are here, they're looked at every day, at least once a day by a cowboy in the pen, most times twice a day. We'll ride into the pen, move the cattle around, assess their, their health status, whether, whether we think maybe they're a little lame or whether they have a problem with their eye or whether maybe they've got a respiratory illness. If we find anything like that, we'll take that animal out, we'll administer antibiotics, and then we'll put that animal back into its pen so it has the same, it doesn't miss its brothers and sisters, so to speak, it's, it's, in, it's in its herd and they're comfortable where they're, where they're at. Once everybody gets adapted, then we can start commingling them in bigger pens, mm -hmm. but we won't do that until everybody's had their vaccine so that we can help them with their immune system get a little bit better. The better we can make the animals feel, the happier we can keep them, the safer we can make them feel, the healthier they're gonna stay. It's just like you and me. Mm -hmm. If you get stressed out, you've got something going on at work, there's, there, you're under a lot of pressure, you might get the sniffles, you might feel a little bad. You, your immune system just gets a little depressed because you're under stress. Same thing with the animals. So it's better for us the happier we can keep them, the healthier they stay. The healthier they stay, the better our bottom line is. So there's, there's a lot of things that we do to keep the animals happy that makes them healthy. Like we provide windbreaks to, to help keep the animals more comfortable. When, when it gets wet or muddy, we'll clean the pans and give them a dry space. We'll scrape the, the mud and the manure out of the way so they've got a dry space to lay down and a comfortable space for them. Even in the big corporate yards, constant, they have crews that do nothing but clean pens every day. That's all they do. They clean the pens every day. There's someone out there cleaning the pens, cleaning the water tanks. So it's not just small feed yards like ours that do that. Every feed yard does that because it's it's all the same thing. If the cattle aren't happy in a little yard, they're not going to be happy in a big yard. It's it's the things that you do like that to make the cattle comfortable and happy, to make them more healthy. That that produces better beef faster. I just I really like that challenge because it's a big it's a big challenge to take those to take those calves and, and watch them grow and see what they turn into and know that you've helped them along the way, that you've kept them healthy and helped them to
attain their final goal, which is be for your plate. It's exciting to me to see what you can what you can help the animal do to achieve its goal. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the goal that you set for that animal, what, what they're what they've been put on the earth for, what they're designed for. Cattle were designed to feed us and to provide milk for us. They were they, that's what God designed them for. And it's really exciting to be able to step out there and say, look what we can do how many people we can feed with with how few of resources we can do it with. I, I think last year we produced like 27 million pounds of beef. That's a huge number and that, and I don't know if you realize when I say 27 million it's like 27.3 million pounds. A really good carcass weight is going to be 800 pounds of actual meat that you get. So if you figure that much meat, that's that's a lot of animals. There's no way you could feed that many, there's not enough grass out there to feed that many animals. There's no way you could do that. Number one, there's not that much grass out there. If there was that much grass out there, it would take three times as long to get the animal to that body weight to be able to produce that many pounds of meat as it does to feed them a highly a high concentrated diet a high carbohydrate diet here in the feedlot so in order to feed the world which is what we do we not just the US but to feed the world we have to have the capability to bring those animals in feed them to produce the beef a little faster than you would out in the pasture We've become so much more efficient with the way we feed the cattle, how we can help those cattle convert that grain into meat, that we use less feed, less water, less everything than we have in the past. We're continually improving that. Every day it gets a little better and a little better. We've got science behind things that we can do to help the cattle produce this beef faster. People say that it hurts hurts our environment, it's actually helping our environment. It helps reduce our carbon footprint. I know people don't understand that, but you have less cattle using less land and they're using less water. You, you, you produce the beef faster than you normally would, so that, that reduces the amount, the amount of water, the amount of land, the amount of everything that you've got out there. So that helps make our carbon footprint a little smaller. Mm -hmm. There's really no other viable option that's good for the planet and good for the people as far as protein production. The only way that we could do anything different is if people quit eating beef. And we don't want that. You don't want to quit eating beef. If you do quit eating beef, you have to get your protein source somewhere else. And farming Soybeans, say for your protein, is is not is not an option. You would increase your carbon footprint, and there's not enough farm ground out there to get that much protein to replace the beef. And God gave us cows to eat. Mm -hmm. That's that's what He put them here for, and He put us in dominion over them to take care of them, to be to raise them, and and take the best care of them we can. It's that's one of our, I say it's our gift from God, to be able to do that and to, to raise it and to raise beef and to be able to feed people. I mean, we, we take a lot of pride in, in what we put out there. We don't do this for the money. We do it for the love of animals. Uh, saying that, we do it for the money. It's our job. That's what we do. But I guarantee you that, <laughs> that most people, if they knew what we actually made or lost in a year, would not do this business if they didn't love the animals. We don't open presents on Christmas morning. We open presents Christmas evening. We don't go to church Easter Sunday. We don't have we have Thanksgiving dinner, mid, usually late day, not midday. 
we don't do all those things because we're here with the cattle, taking care of the cattle, their first priority. All those other things that other people get to do, you know, they get to watch their little kids get up Christmas morning and run and find their presents under the tree. We've never done that. My son has about to bundle up and go get in the feed truck or go get horseback and look at the cattle and make sure everybody was okay first. They're our first priority regardless of, of what's going on. In the middle of the night, if we get a big windstorm come in, we're, we're up here checking on the cattle to make sure everybody's calm, everybody's okay, that nobody's stirred up and nothing has spooked them and they're going to run through a fence or get hurt or anything. They're our first priority. It's, it's what we do. It's, it's, it's our life. It's not a job. It's our livelihood. So. I don't think people realize that. I don't think people realize what we do to put food on the table. What 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 all it entails, how like I said it's not it's not just a job, it's our life. It's what it's what we do and it's it bothers me when people when people who don't know say that we're mean to the animals or that we abuse them. Nothing is farther from the truth. And I, I would invite anyone who thinks that to visit, visit with a local rancher, visit with a feed yard, go find out for yourself what really, what really happens. Educate yourself. Go there firsthand and see what it is. Because I guarantee you 99% of the people who do this for a living want you to know. They want you to know what they do and how they treat the animals and what all goes into it. They're, no one has anything to hide. They, they want you to know because they're passionate about it. It's, it's their life. That's what they chose to do. And they're passionate about what they do and about the animals. If you didn't love the animals, if you didn't care for them, you wouldn't be here doing this. There's no way. Because like I said, they, they come before everything.